Hi friends, in this video we are going to deal with the case summary of the latest Supreme Court judgment pronounced now in the area of labor law, especially matters involving validity of the provisions of Employees Pension Amendment Scheme 2014 in EPF pension case. To know more about it, please watch this video fully. If it is helpful to you, please like, share and comment and never forget to subscribe to it and further click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button. In the crucial judgment titled the Employees Provident Fund Organization and Another etc. versus Sunil Kumar and others etc. pronounced on 4th November 2022 the legality of certain amendments and modifications made by the central government to employees pension scheme 1995 was being dealt and for which the High Courts of Kerala, Rajasthan and Delhi gave their verdicts in favor of employees and they are under challenge in appeals before this court. Further, 54 writ petitions were also filed by the employees themselves or on their behalf under Article 32 of the Constitution seeking invalidation of the notification date at 22nd August 2014 that is the Employees Pension Amendment Scheme 2014. Along with those appeals, these writ petitions were also addressed. The Supreme Court has held that classification of the employees made by the authorities on the basis of the salary drawn in the 2014 amendment meets the test of reasonable classification contemplated in Article 14 of the Constitution. The requirement in the scheme for employees' contribution to the extent of 1.16% for option members is illegal. There is nothing in the Employees' Provident Funds and Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1952 which requires payment to the pension fund by an employee. Section 6A of the 1952 Act also does not have any such stipulation. Since the 1952 Act does not contemplate any contribution to, the, to be made by an employee to remain in the scheme, the central government under the scheme itself cannot mandate such a stipulation. What is to be considered here is that for the mandatory members, the central government continues to contribute the requisite 1.16% of their salary. For option members, additional contribution by them is contemplated in order to remain in the scheme. In such a situation, a legislative amendment of the 1952 Act would have been necessary, providing for contribution to be made by an employee. To that extent, the provision of the scheme requiring contribution by an individual employee is ultra virus the Parent Act. At the same time, the pension amount to be paid is calculated on projections that the corpus would include the option employee's additional contribution of 1.16%. This court also cannot mandate the central government to contribute to a pension scheme in absence of a legislative provision to that effect. It would be for the administrators to readjust the contribution pattern within the scope of the statute and one possible solution could be to raise the level of the employee's contribution in the scheme. This court shall, however, suspend the operation of this part of judgment of this court for a period of six months so that the legislature may consider the necessity of bringing appropriate legislative amendment on this count. For the aforesaid period, the scheme as it stands shall continue. Till such time, if no such legislative exercise is undertaken, the duty to contribute 1.16% of the salary shall apply on option members as well. This contribution shall be adjusted depending on any amendment that may be brought. For the period of six months, however, the opting employees shall make payment of 1.16% contribution as stop gap measure. In the event no amendment to the statute or the scheme is made within such extended time, then the administrators of the fund will have to operate the pension fund for the option members from out of the existing corpus. The other aspect of the controversy involves changing the method of computation of the pensionable salary. This change of methodology comes within the power of the central government to modify a scheme under Section 7 of the 1952 Act read with Item 10 of the Schedule 3 to the Act 
as also paragraph 32 of this scheme. This alteration of the computation is ancillary to determination of scale of pension along with pensionary benefits and para 32 of the pension scheme specifically authorizes the central government to alter the rate of contribution payable under the scheme or the scale of any benefit admissible under the scheme. There is a reasonable basis for effecting change in the computation methodology for determining pensionable salary and this court does not find any illegality or unconstitutionality in effecting this amendment. This court finds from section 17A of the 1952 Act that the investment of the provident fund for the trust fund are also to be as per the directions of the central government. In quashing the circular dated 31st May 2017, the Delhi High Court held that the employees of unexempted establishments and exempted establishment form a homogeneous group. Section 6A of the Act also envisages coverage of employees of exempted uh, establishments under Section 176 of the 1952 Act within the pension scheme. Further, Class 1-3 of the pension scheme contemplates keeping within its fold the establishments to which the 1952 Act applies. These establishments would include exempted establishments as well. The employees of exempted establishments are integrated into the pension scheme and the employees of an exempted establishment should not be deprived of the benefit of getting option to remain in the pension scheme while drawing salary beyond the ceiling limit in situations where similarly situated employees of unexempted establishments can exercise such option. In the event the scheme is construed in a way which would exclude them, that would lead to artificial classification of otherwise same categories of employees. Thus the pension scheme ought to apply to the employees of the exempted establishments in the same manner as this scheme applies to the employees of unexempted or regular establishments. In order to be entitled to the benefits of the pension fund, the employer and the employee simultaneously with exercising option in the terms of the order of this court shall also have to give an undertaking of transferring the employer's contribution at the stipulated rate maintained by the trust which shall be equivalent to and not lower than the sum which would have been transferable had such fund been maintained by the provident fund authorities. Such transfer shall take place immediately after exercise of such option within such period as may be directed by the administrators of the pension fund. Further, the dual option as is contemplated in paragraph 11.4 of the pension scheme post-2014 amendment has to be merged into one. In the event, the employer and employee jointly opt for coverage beyond the salary limit of Rs 15,000 without giving an earlier option under the unamended class 11.3 of the pension scheme, they would not be automatically excluded from their right to exercise option under para 11.4 of the scheme post amendment. The other condition for enhanced coverage relates to the date within which such fresh option is to be exercised by a member which is stipulated to be within a period of six months from 1st September 2014. It would be legitimate to proceed on the basis that several members did not exercise such option earlier because of the stand taken by the Provident Fund authorities that option under Proviso to Para 11.3 of the scheme prior to 2014 amendment has to be exercised within a specified date which stand was negated in the decision of R.C. Gupta and others versus Regional Provident Fund Commissioner the employees provident fund organization and others reported in 2018-14 ACC 809. The time limit for coverage beyond the ceiling amount should be extended by a further period of four months from today to enable all the members of the pension fund drawing more than rupees 6,500 to exercise the joint option as contemplated in para 11.4 of the pension scheme post-2014 amendment. 
one such joint option exercise the transfer of fund from the provident fund corpus to the pension fund shall be effected in the terms of the scheme thus the provisions contained in the notification dated 22nd august 2014 are legal and valid amendment to the pension scheme brought about by the notification dated 22nd august 2014 shall apply to the employees of the exempted establishments in the same manner as the employees of the regular establishments a transfer of funds from the exempted establishments shall be in the manner as directed the employees who exercised option under the proviso to para 113 of the 1995 scheme and continue to be in service as on 1st september 2014 will be guided by the amended provisions of para 114 of the pension scheme the members of scheme who did not exercise option as contemplated in the proviso to para 113 of the pension scheme as it was before 2014 amendment would be entitled to exercise option under para 114 of the post amendment scheme their right to exercise option before 1st september 2014 stands crystallized in the judgment of this court in the case of rc gupta the scheme as it stood before 1st september 2014 did not provide for any cut off date and thus those members shall be entitled to exercise option in terms of para 114 of the scheme as it stands at present the exercise of option shall be in the nature of joint options covering pre amended para 113 as also the amended para 114 of pension scheme all the employees who did not exercise option but were entitled to do so but could not due to the interpretation on cut off date by authorities ought to be given a further chance to exercise their option time to exercise option under para 114 of the scheme under these circumstances shall stand extended by a further period of 4 months the employees who retired prior to 1st september 2014 without exercising any option under para 113 of the pre amended scheme have already exited from the membership thereof they would not be entitled to benefit of this judgment the employees who retired before 1st september 2014 upon exercising option and a para 113 of the 1995 scheme shall be covered by the provisions of the para 113 of the pension scheme as it stood prior to the amendment of 2014 the requirement of the members to contribute at the rate of 1.16% of their salary to the extent such salary exceeds rupees 15000 per month as an additional contribution under the um, amended scheme is held to be ultra virus the provisions of the 1952 act this court suspends operation of this part of this court's order for a period of 6 months this court does so to enable the authorities to make adjustments in the scheme so that the additional contribution can be generated from some other legitimate source within the scope of the act which could include enhancing the rate of contribution of the employers this court is not speculating on what steps the authorities will take as it would be for the legislature or the framers of the scheme to make necessary amendment for the aforesaid period of 6 months or till such time uh, any amendment is made whichever is earlier the employees contribution shall be a stop gap measure the said amount or said sum shall be adjustable on the basis of alteration to the scheme that may be made This court agrees with the view taken by the division bench in the case of R.C. Gupta. So far as interpretation of the proviso to para 113 pre-amended pension scheme is concerned, the fund authorities shall implement the directives contained in the said judgment within a period of eight weeks, subject to this court's directions contained earlier in this para.